December 1st has become a pretty important date, and it really only started last year. December 1st marks the one year since I moved back to New York from Los Angeles, and I've been having a lot of feelings about it. I've been melancholy, I've been proud of myself. It's a lot of mixed emotions. I made a video a few months ago about my mental health issues, and I stated in that video that I wanted to use video as a conduit for mental health discussion. So here I am a year from my lowest point, and we'll see where I am and how far I've come and the things I'm still dealing with to this day, and how maybe we can all help each other out to live a better life. Before I get into all that, I want to show you a piece of video that's pretty significant that I've never shown anyone. So this video is from the morning of December 1st, right before my flight out. I'm sitting on the roof of my apartment in downtown Los Angeles, and for some reason I decided to document this moment. I can't exactly articulate why I did it and my thought process behind it, but I knew it was a part of a huge change that was happening. And so I wanted to document my thoughts, and I just spoke into my iPhone. I watched it back about a month ago, and it was, it was pretty eye-opening to watch. Here's some clips from that video. It's uh, December 1st, 2016, in Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles. Unfortunately, this is my last day in Los Angeles. Um, I wasn't expecting to come home like this, but obviously had to take care of bigger picture stuff. Um, my depression that I've been dealing with for a few years has gotten out of hand and I really need some time with the family to get better and work on my problem solving and then work to get better when I'm out here. But I want to come back to LA. I really like it out here. What I find so significant about this video is it's not so much what I'm saying, it's the tone of my voice. It's a man who's been beaten down and just lost. And I remember that time being difficult, but hearing how my voice sounded at the time it really speaks to how in the gutter I was mentally and why my family had to step in. I'll explain more about that. My anxiety went unaddressed for years and years and years. I don't even think I really realized how bad it was or that I even suffered from it. When I was in my old work routine of working in television and playing music, I would get these horrible spells of depression where I would lock myself in my room and beat myself up mentally. But then the next day I, I had to go to work and it allowed me to push it off. I think like many of us do, you just kind of push it off and go with your day to day. When I was in Los Angeles, I struggled to get work for a period of time and it allowed me to sit with my thoughts and then have nowhere to go. I had to stare them in the face. Now because I wasn't equipped with the tools of solving these issues, I ended up just sinking deeper and deeper and deeper. I, I tried to walk out and then I would maybe try to apply to like one job and they said no and then they would just like, I would just dwell on it even more. That dark side of your mind that tells you that you're not good enough, that tells you that you can't do it, that you suck at what you do. That side of your brain gets fed with the reality of not getting a job or not playing music well. And then it becomes a cycle of confirmation where you're like, you're right, I do suck. I'm not good at what I do. And then you and then you just keep piling on. You just keep avalanching these thoughts. It was about mid-November, and I went out for the day, and I, I was looking for a job, and I, I couldn't find one. And I called my mom. It was just going to be a regular call on the phone. And when I was on the phone with her, the dam broke. Like I just collapsed on the phone and, and just started bawling my eyes out. I think maybe like once in the past I've had that with my mom. I can't recall too many times like openly crying like that for my mom and this was an issue that I never addressed. I've, I've never once talked about mental health with anyone in my family. I've never talked about my depressive states that I was in. I never talked to the most friends about it. I had such an ego about it. About an hour or two later my sister Devin calls and, and, and she goes, you need to come home. And I, I doubled down and went, no, I'm a failure, I'm a loser, I can't come back. I can't come back. I'm out here to do what I said I was going to do. Going back home will be a complete, utter failure, which is what I am. I got off the phone with her and thought about it. 
it's the thing I'm the most thankful for outside of that call is that I sat there and I, I actually listened. I took her information and I said, there needs to be a change here. I can't keep doing this. And uh, I agreed. Uh, that week we're just, we were buying a plane ticket and tell my friends. And, th and thankfully I, I'm surrounded by the most supportive friends in, in the songwriter community. The, that group of people, they were, man, they were so supportive. So the most I take from this past year is to listen. Listen to your loved ones, listen to your friends. When they're sending you a signal, even if your ego completely disagrees with it on the onset, it could lead to completely new experiences. It's the reason why I left LA. It's the reason why I started working with kids. It's the reason why I started making videos. Because I needed help from other people to tell me. I feel so lucky to be sitting in this position right now. I'm fortunate enough to be living in this beautiful complex now and making a living, making art, but I, I, you never do it alone. The last thing I want to note in this video is I'm very proud of myself for the past year, but I want to make it abundantly clear if you're still struggling that I'm struggling as well. And in fact, the past two weeks have not been my strongest mentally. I, I found myself dipping into some old patterns and some old thoughts that plagued me about a year ago. Every day is a battle of my anxiety. Every day I have to consciously work at it to get myself better. I, I'm here to talk with you and I'm not perfect. I have my struggles every single day. I found myself getting in my own head in the past week about my videos and music and what exactly am I fucking doing. But we can work through it all together. So thank you so much for watching guys. I, I really, really appreciate it. I made a promise about continuing my discussions on mental health and I plan on doing it. So here's the next step in that process and you can see why exactly I left LA and, and some of the information that I withheld for a long time. It was hard to hide that information. I had to tell lies and kind of dance around the subject every time, but here it is in the open. I struggle with anxiety, it's about to depression and I'm working to fix it every day. And you can too. And we're all in this together. Please comment and message me if you ever want to talk about this at all. And I'll be sure to reach out to you as well when I'm having a problem. In the coming weeks, I'll discuss maybe some tools and tactics that I use every day to kind of keep me on track. If you're interested in something like that, I would love to share it with you. Otherwise, we will revisit this topic soon. I really love you guys all. If you're here for if you watch the vlogs or my music stuff, projects I've done for other people, I, I really appreciate every one of it. And I want to continue this conversation going forward and, and, be a, and be as open about it as possible. I love you guys all and stay healthy.